What is arbitration and should you seek or oppose it? Brought to you by YourLegalLagout.com, your advantage if you're being sued by debt collectors. I've recently had a comment on YouTube asking me to discuss arbitration, and it has also come up in several recent teleconferences as members considered seeking arbitration. First, a definition. Arbitration is the submission of your case to a private entity known as an arbitrator. For debt cases, it will inevitably be a single arbitrator or a company that will provide a single arbitrator, but for other cases, it could be other things, like a panel, maybe. In any event, there will be an arbitrator and some special rules that will not be your state's rules of civil procedure, probably limit discovery, um, will be one thing, and also might not be your state's rules of evidence. Arbitration is popular because it makes it easier and cheaper for people to engage in litigation. The discovery process will be limited and the appeals process almost eliminated. Almost all of these things are completely and profoundly bad for debt defendants. And that's why I've always suggested debt defendants should avoid arbitration. But there's another side to the question, and there are some who argue in favor of allowing it or even forcing arbitration uh, when it's possible. So what's their gig? I think the argument in favor of arbitration boils down to the fee, which apparently has to be paid up front by the debt collector, assuming the debt collector brought the case. And that can amount to two or three or even more thousand dollars, so it's not a little thing. The idea here is that debt collectors won't want to spend two or three thousand dollars on arbitration and that court is for them much cheaper. And there's truth and power in that idea. Debt collectors never worry about winning a case, but they do know you don't have much money. And that means that they're sure that they'll win, but they worry they won't collect the money. The more you make them spend, the more worried they'll be and maybe they'll drop the case if you demand arbitration. That is a possibility. One big question that may be more theoretical than real is, who pays the arbitrator ultimately? It, I say it may be theoretical since I just said the debt collector isn't sure you have any money at all, but this won't stop them from seeking as big a judgment as possible, and if they get a judgment, they will try to collect it all. So be advised that the judgment size could matter and it will be, you know, could be larger. Okay, but who pays the arbitrator? I think some states may have rules that matter. And I know that California, for example, does have rules regarding employment and consumer brought cases. So that wouldn't be um, a case like this, a debt case. In the absence of any state-based rule, you would look to the arbitration provision giving you the right to arbitration, i.e. to the contract. That will often say who pays the arbitrator, and it can specify any of a number of different things, from the company pays all, to loser pays all, to dividing it up. If it says the company pays all, the company can't shift that payment to you if you lose. If the loser pays all, well, that's obvious. But what if there isn't a direction in the contract? Uh, that would usually mean that you start by splitting the cost, but that the arbitrator can award the cost to the winner, i.e. add it to the judgment. The net of all this would suggest that you will have some advantage if the contract makes the, com the company pay, uh, but there's a risk if the loser has to pay. And of course, it matters a lot who pays up front, which is often the debt collector. So, should you compel arbitration? In a debt buyer collector case, i.e. not the original creditor, I'd still lean strongly against using arbitration. You should win the case under most state laws because of the rules of evidence. If it's, a, if it's an original creditor, on the other hand, it's a much closer question. You'll have to consider all the things we've discussed here and make a judgment call. Filing a motion to compel arbitration might trigger some settlement negotiations, but I wouldn't think you could get the company to give you a very steep discount. But there I'm just guessing based on what I know about lawyers and not experience in these types of cases. 
I remain very hesitant about suggesting arbitration, but there could be value in considering it if you're dealing with an original creditor. I would appreciate comments from people who have opted for arbitration who or who are considering it now. If that's what you did, I'd like to know why and also how it went, whether the collector just dropped the suit, offered a good settlement, opposed your motion to compel arbitration, and etc. And um, among other things, I'd like to know whether you think you were treated fairly by the arbitrator or the arbitration process. If you want to remain in court and defend yourself there, you should, you should check out our memberships. Helping people protect their rights is what we do. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Take action to protect yourself from the debt collectors and help others do the same. Please like this video, share it with anybody you think could use it, subscribe, and comment as all these things help other people find our materials. Your legal leg up dot com.